All righty. May I, Mike? You know how this show always starts. It's a gimmick. All right. So yesterday, Andrade and Sammy had an... You know what's funny? Let's go back a little further. So on Monday, I think it was Monday, I was making my list of all the topics for the show like I always do, and I had a whole list of topics, and nowhere in there was Andrade and Sammy going back and forth on Twitter. I really wasn't even going to talk about it. And for whatever reason, I was, uh, I was in the middle of the show, and I was like, I guess we've got to talk about Andrade and Sammy. And uh, little did I know, it's a good thing we talked about it. Now everybody kind of knows what happened. So Andrade did an interview, I think on Friday, and he talked about a lot of things. We discussed it on the show. And the key points to me are this. He, he had a scheduled mask versus career match with 10. And in the interview, he's joking about, you know, maybe I'll just lay down. Maybe I'll just lay down and leave. And he talked about how, you know, I'm not supposed to talk to Triple H, but you know, I could talk to my wife, who will talk to Triple H for me. He's pretty much admitting he's just using an intermediary to talk back and forth with WWE. And then he says, you know, I've never had a problem with anybody in this business, except Sammy Guevara. And he says, one day Sammy was crying that I hit him too hard. And come on, it's wrestling. I hit you, you hit me. Why are you complaining about it? And he said, I, I talked to him about this, and I asked if he had a problem, and he told me no. So on Monday... Sammy Guevara is just, he's clearly irritated with this interview. And he goes on Twitter, and he just says a bunch of stuff. And it's not true, and you're a jobber, and a bun- you're only here because of your father-in-law, and, and this and that. And then Andrade snaps back, and he's like, you know, I'll see you on Wednesday, haha. And, you know, we were talking about it Monday. Like, there's, there's two options here. It's either real... Okay, which is, you know, someone clamped down on this immediately. Or it's fake, and it's like the stupidest angle ever, because this is stupid stuff to make an angle out of it, you know. So I, I presumed it was real, and it was real. And on, I guess it was on Tuesday, they were both talked to and essentially told, knock it off, stop this, get off social media for crying out loud. And other people in the company are, are tweeting about how horrible this looks for the company. These two guys are tweeting about this. But for whatever reason, they weren't asked to take it down. It was, it, was, it was still up as of yesterday. I presume it's still up right now. So Andrade had, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily call it, was, call it a threat. But, I mean, he did say, I'll see you on Wednesday after this back and forth. And so they were contacted, and they were both told, you, you know, don't do anything. And Andrade agreed, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to do anything on Wednesday. And and so Wednesday came, and there's obviously, as noted, two versions of this story. The TMZ version is that they had words. The TMZ version is Sammy started swinging through several punches, according to TMZ, and then Andrade punched him. That's the story that was that was on TMZ. Now, I was told, and obviously this is the case, that the TMZ story is Andrade's side of the story. So I obviously talked to a lot of people yesterday, and everybody I talked to had a different story, which was not Andrade's side of the story. And, you know, I heard it all yesterday. Oh, Brian's sticking up for AEW. Bro, they both work for AEW. I'm not sticking up for anybody by telling you that multiple people all had a totally different story than what was published on TMZ. And the story was, essentially, that Andrade showed up and he blindsided Sammy and he sucker punched him and it was immediately broken up. Every single, every single, every single person that I talked to the story involved Sammy not fighting back, okay? There was one version, I was told, in which Andrade started yelling at Sammy, or maybe he spun him around or whatever, and Sammy shoved him, and then Andrade punched him. That was one one person said that they had heard that Andrade uh, was shoved first. Every other person, there was no shove. Every other person, it was Andrade showed up, sucker punched him, and then... 
was sent home. Now, and no, this was not, I did not talk to Sammy, okay? This is not from Sammy. Now, yes, there are two versions of this, but I think it's been made abundantly clear that if the TMZ side of the story was correct, that if Sammy started yelling, he showed, if, if the story is that Sammy showed up, started yelling at Andrade, started punching him, and then Andrade responded with a punch. Uh, Sammy is not working the show. Sammy is not working the main event. Sammy would have been suspended by now or sent home. None of those things happen. That tells you that not only did multiple sources say that Sammy did not start this fight and was sucker punched, but the follow-up tells you that there's it's the story told to TMZ cannot be true. So, Sammy did, in fact, work the show, and Sammy did, in fact, work the main event, and Sammy has not, in fact, been sent home or suspended as of today. So, you're welcome to pick Andrade's side if you want to, but this is not A, W, F, blah, blah, blah. Literally, there is no evidence that supports Andrade's side of the story. All evidence, all accounts, all the follow-up, all support the side of the story that, you know, Sammy got blindsided and sucker punched. Now, I don't know what is in Andrade's mind. But I do know that pretty much universally within AEW, the belief is that he wants out... He wants to go to WWE. He's trying to get himself fired. And that this whole thing was an attempt to get himself fired. Now, there was a huge argument on our board yesterday, I'm sure elsewhere. Bro, just let the guy go. Just fire the guy. And my argument on Observer Radio last night was, send him home. You can either send him home without pay in which case you're probably going to have to release him sooner than later because you can't just not pay him for three years. Or you pay him and you send him home through the duration of his contract and he's never in the locker room again. And quite frankly, that's what I would do. And people have talked about it's a waste of money, blah, blah, blah. Listen, if you fire him and you allow him to go to WWE, all you've done is tell the rest of the locker room and quite frankly, as I'll talk about, it, it's not the whole locker room, but there are people that want to go to WWE. All you're doing is telling them, just show up for work and punch somebody, and you're going to be fired, and you can go to WWE. That is not the message that you want to send. Now, I realize I'm taking a lot of your time, Mike, but the other key here is that to the outside world, this place looks like an absolute disaster, which is which is they need to deal with this in some way. but. I mean, I've been told from so many people, most, definitely not all, most of the people working for AEW are perfectly happy working for AEW. But there is a percentage, and I don't know if it's 5%, 7%, but it's very small. This percentage does not want to be there. And they're making it so obvious and so public that to an outside viewer, this looks like an asylum. It looks like it's just madness and everybody wants out and it's they don't need that public look, but that is what it looks like to the public right now. But my point is, because it is a rather small percentage of people that want out and are causing these overall problems, dude, send that small percentage home, pay them for the duration of the deal they agreed to, and be done with it. Yes, it's going to cost you some money, but it's going to cost you less money than you think. Because it's not like you're sending home 50% of the roster. You'll send home three, four people. The locker room is going to be way better off without those people there if they're really unhappy being there. And you move on, and you set the precedent, and that's the way that you deal with this issue. What part do you love about this job, Granny? Nothing. When you when you irritate me, <laughs> you make me mad. I... I guess seeing seeing you guys when you needle me, quit yeah. talking over me. Sorry. If Granny, this person asks, could leave only one thing in her will for Brian, <laughs> <laughs> what would it be? Rufus versus Roman Reigns, 2016. Rufus, Rufus on 
barricade. Rufus comes back, drops reins on the top rope. <laughs> Rufus has a temper tantrum because only two count. Do you know that we put a clip of you on the internet last week? And these people on the internet are so dumb that they thought that we hired an actor to play you. No. Mm -hmm. Ah, Ah, forget about it. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.